الحمد لله الحمد لله نستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا فمن يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا زدنا علما فقال الله تعالى في القران الكريم فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد انزلنا اليكم كتابا فيه ذكركم افلا تعقلون صدق الله العظيم the ayah that i just recited to you the translation of this ayah is that we have certainly sent down to you a book in which is your mention then will you not reason now this is a very important ayah to which a story is also tied that happened after the times of the sahaba which we're going to talk about today but the idea is whenever we open the quran and we start reading the quran and we start going through the ayahs of the quran the idea is to be able to understand it and apply it it's extremely important for all of us to be able to apply what we are reading in order to apply we need to understand what we are reading and that's the beauty that the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam on different occasions he recited different parts of the quran so that the sahaba the companions know all of these different parts of the quran and what are the messages in it and he gave different fadail the different honors of the different surah of the quran so that the people make it a practice to recite those surahs from the quran so when they are in the practice of reciting those surahs all of those ideas they are getting revised over and over and over again so this is a very very important ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that you are mentioned in my book so if you think you will be able to find guidance in my book so the story that i'm about to share with you today is reported by one of the muhaddith his name was abu abdullah muhammad bin nasr maruzi and he wrote a book called qiyam al-layl in which he mentioned a story of one of the students of the sahaba the companions and the name of this person was ahnaf ibn qais ahnaf ibn qais was one day sitting and somebody recited this ayah so he heard this ayah being recited that we have suddenly sent down to you a book in which you are mentioned you are mentioned so that idea struck him and he's like i am mentioned in the book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Can anybody please give me the Holy Quran so that I can look where am I in this book? So he started going over the pages of the Quran to find where are the attributes mentioned of an individual that reflects him? And where are the attributes of the people who are mentioned who are higher than him so that he can strive to achieve that goal? So he started out and one of the ayahs that he started out with كانوا قليلا من الليل ما يهجعون they used to sleep but little at night وبل اسحارهم يستغفرون and in the hours before dawn they would ask Allah's forgiveness وفي اموالهم حق للسائل والمحروم and in their wealth they always have a portion for the people who are needy This is one quality of the set of people that they are worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also they are taking care of the needy people around them. Then he went forward. He ran into another group of people. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, تَتَجَافَ جُنُوبُهُمْ عَنِ الْمَضَاجِعَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفًا وَطَمْعًا And they rise from their beds. They supplicate their Lord in fear and aspiration. that they're fearful yet they believe their lord is merciful and will forgive them and wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqun and from whatever has been given to them they spend in the way of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's another category of people then he started reading and ran into another group of people wal ladina yabituna li rabbihim sujjadan wa qiyama and those who spend part of the night to their lord prostrating means going in the sujood and standing in prayer so that's another group of people 
Then he went forward, he went forward, and then he read about these group of people. Now these are a special group of people because these people are giving money to the needy and whenever they're trying to help, they're trying to help irrespective of their financial state. They may be going through hard times themselves, but they still will try to see how can I still contribute. And it doesn't have to be money alone. It can be time and effort as well. So they're constantly looking for opportunities to contribute. And they are trying to hold on to their angry behavior. And they're extremely forgiving towards individuals. And indeed, Allah loves those people who are the good doers. So that's another category of people. Then he started reading further and ran into some more people. These are the kind of people, they'll go out of their way to help the other people even though they themselves are in the hour of need. This is another group of people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, anybody who has been saved from the sickness of heart, فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Indeed, these are the people who shall succeed. And then he went on and read another group of people. These are the group of people that hold on to themselves, refrain from bad deeds which are kaba'ir, which are huge. Even the immortal immortalities and the and the in the shameless acts, the immoral the immoralities and the shameless act, they, they hold on themselves from those. And whenever they get angry, they forgive. Now these are the traits that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you look at, constantly balances things. Worship and the حقوق ibad, the right of the people that you live with. At the same time, both are getting balanced. Then, in the next ayah, these are the people, They respond to the call of their Lord, And they steadfast in their prayers. They establish the prayer. And then the next quality that is being talked about, this, this group of people have not yet been talked about. They discussed among themselves before coming to a decision, a conclusion. They're not the kind of people that are egoistic, that my way or highway, they're not those kind of people. They would sit, they will discuss, they will come to a conclusion, and then they will go into execute it. And once they execute it, there is no turning back. And they all have their stakes involved in it. That's why everybody is on the same plate. وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ And still, they fall in that same category, that whatever we have given to them, they spend from there. Then he ran across some other group of people who were nothing like the first group of people. And among the one of them was, إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا إِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ And whenever the mention of the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is done to them, they are proud. They're arrogant. We still have those kind of people. And those kind of people were back then too. And the problem comes in when among the believers... This kind of idea creeps in when you tell them, Allah tells you, don't do this. Allah tells you, do this. Oh, yeah, 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 brother, yeah, I know. But they don't take it seriously. What is it? That Allah's word is overcoming what I think? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no, no, these are the kind of people that are extremely arrogant. وَيَقُولُونَ إِنَّا لَتَارِكُ آلِهَتَنَا لِشَعِرٍ مَجْنُونَ And should we leave our idols? Because a poet who is crazy is telling us, ma'ad Allah, to the Prophet of the God, these are the kind of words they would use. And we have those kind of people even to this day who would make fun of the Prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he ran into another group of people. وَإِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ الشَّمَ أَزَّتْ قُلُوبُ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ And whenever Allah's name is mentioned alone, that only worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their hearts are sad. That why only Allah is mentioned. وَإِذَا ذُكِرَ الَّذِينَ مِن دُونِهِ And when the others are mentioned, 
idahum idhum yastabsh idahum yastabshirun so they become extremely joyous so their priorities of worship are messed up so the, he ran into those kind of people. Then he went ahead and ran into a third kind of people. And these are the kind of people who have made their way into the hellfire. And when they are in the hellfire, the people in the Jannah are asking them, Ma salaka kum fi saqar? What did you do? Where did you go wrong? That you went to saqar? Among the stages of Jahannam, this is one of the worst ones. How did you, what did you do that you ended up here? Qalu, they will say, Lam nakum minal musalleen. We never used to pray. Walam nakum nut'imul miskeen. We would never feed a needy and a poor person. Wa kunna nakhudu ma'al khaidin. And we will make fun of the religion and the prophets and the people of the religion among the people who are already making fun of them wa kunna nukadhibu bi yawmid din and we denied that there will be a day when we will be answerable to anybody hatta atana al yaqeen until the day of judgment came and we truly really saw but it was too late and when he reached this point the guy raised his hands and said oh allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Please protect me from not being among this category of the people because they are doomed. Their chapter is closed because they're already in the hellfire. And then he started reading through pages and pages of the Quran. Finally, he got to another ayah which said, These are the kind of people who look at their deeds and they say, Oh my God, I really have sinned. This is where I went wrong and this is where I went right. They really accept. Because accepting that you are sinning is itself is a great thing. Because it kills the arrogance. They do a mix. Some of their deeds are good. Some of their deeds are bad. They do a mixed behavior. But whatever bad deeds they do, they know that they are bad. And they acknowledge it. They are trying to improve it. And Asa Asallahu Anyatuba Alayhim. These are the kind of people that go back to their Lord and ask forgiveness. In Allah Ghafur Rahim. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that is all forgiving and the merciful. So when he ran through this ayah, he's like, This is me. This is me. That I know where I'm going wrong, yet my deeds are a mix and match of good and bad deeds. And a lot of the people are like that. A lot of the people are like that. And this shows a reflection of a good heart. Because you acknowledge and realize where you're going wrong. The bad thing happens when you stop acknowledging and you think you're perfect. And nothing can go wrong. That's where the problem starts. So a person acknowledges and asks for forgiveness. Work on improving. That's exactly the kind of people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive because they are trying. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all forgiving. So the idea is to read. And that's exactly what the very first message that was delivered in the cave to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through the angel Jibra'il. Iqra, read. Why? Because reading is so important. If you do not read, how will you going to know what's in that book? How will you be able to understand those verses? How would you be able to understand the explanation of those verses? The books of hadith, the books of tafasir, and how would you be able to comprehend and do your research? So reading is extremely important. That's why when kids start going to school, the first thing that they're taught is how to read. Writing comes after. Sentences, structure, words, all of that stuff is much later. Punctuation mark, all of that much later. First they need to identify, this is A. And now they practice on writing in A. Once they go through A through Z, now they are making apple. Now they are making car. Now they are making other things. And once they grow up, these are the kids, now that they learn a car, now they are making a car. Now they're doing a research. So how can you do a research when you don't even know how to read? So reading is extremely important. If you talk about worldly affairs, 
or you talk about religious affairs. Without reading, I can't even read my prescription. If the pharmacist tells me you've got to take this medication twice a day for five days, and I forget, and now I'm looking at this bottle, and I have no idea what it says. Reading is that important to survive and then progress. Reading is extremely important. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right away in the first five verses that were sent to us, He said, read in the name of the Lord. And then He talked about a very complicated idea 1400 years ago, alaq, the cling, the clinging process, the birthing process. And then He said, iqra wa rabbuka al-akram, read in the name of your Lord who is most generous. He is the one who taught you with the pen. He taught the man what the man did not know. So it's about reading, writing, comprehending, moving forward. There was a statement that was given to you. Go and research and figure out what is alaq. It took us almost 1400 years to understand alaq. Recently, we understood what alaq is. And there are, there's so much wealth of information in the Qur'an that we still need to understand. We still are trying to understand how 100%, how does the human brain functions? The neurological paths that are being built, because everybody's paths are different. If you do not use your brain after a certain age, what happens to your brain? Does your brain constantly grows and keeps building the paths? Or does it stop? If it does, how to get it going? So there are a lot of people who are working in different areas of just brain itself. And that's one component out of the human body, which is so many components to talk about. So that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ Quran." So they do not reflect upon the Quran. Why do they not reflect upon the Quran? Have their hearts been locked? Now, comprehending happens here. What are we talking about here? Because you will believe in it to comprehend. You need to believe. This is the book without any doubts. And now you have to comprehend and ponder over there were so many non-believers who went through the Qur'an to do their research, and at the end of the research, it didn't move them. To, to them, Qur'an was nothing but a thesis, a book that was being needed to complete my PhD. They never believed, because they never opened that book with ذلك الكتاب ولا ريب فيه. So, reading is important, but believing is the first step. That is why when you open the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is setting our mindset right away. Alif, lam, meem. I'm giving you three letters. I know you don't know what it means. You may be an Arab for 300,000 years, but tell me what it means and nobody can explain. Allahu alam. Alif, lam, meem. Huruf al We just read them. Alif, lam, meem. People have tried explaining them in tafsir, but no explanation can be traced back all the way to the Prophet. And now he says, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِي This is the book without a doubt. هُدَى لِلْمُتَّقِينَ It is the guidance for those who are God conscious. And then you start reading this book cover to cover, ayah by ayah, comprehending it, applying it, and moving forward. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفره إنه هو الغفور الرحيم.